with just 19 days until Georgia's upcoming Senate runoff election, Herschel Walker, the mm -hmm. former college football star turned self-proclaimed FBI agent mm -hmm. turned Republican Senate nominee. Yes. He's adding a new title he's to a, his he's, resume. He's, he's a film critic. He yes. A, so the campaign trial yesterday, and oh, yeah, I just I just want to start this hour with, with this because I'm I'm still trying to figure it out. Maybe somebody uh, somebody can decode what he oh, said. I think Willie could. Walker devoted mm -hmm. more than two minutes to analyzing a monster movie he watched on TV. Somehow trying to tie it to the Senate. Take a look and see mm -hmm. if you can do it. I'm going to tell you to keep the faith. Oh, do you ever watch a stupid movie late at night hoping it's going to get better, don't get better, but you keep watching it anyway? Because the other night, the other night I was watching this movie, I was watching this movie called Fright Night, Freak Night, or some type of night, but it was about vampires. I don't know if you know vampires and cool people, are they not? But I'm going to tell you something that I found out. A werewolf can kill a vampire. Did you know that? I never knew that, so I didn't want to be a vampire anymore. I wanted to be a werewolf. But then, anyway, as I'm watching this movie, and then you can tell you how stupid it is because it's one in the morning. So I'm watching my TV, of uh, these kids watching their TV, a uh, vampire kill on their TV. So you know it's kind of stupid, but I'm still watching, though. As I'm watching this show, what was funny, these kids had a vampire in their attic at their house. So they were watching their TV. Now I'm watching my TV as they're watching their TV, or they see the vampire killer on their TV. So they win this contest to bring this actor. Now, y'all got to stay with me. Bring this actor who's a vampire killer from that TV to get rid of this real-life vampire in that attic. So as this actor comes to their home, he got all the right stuff. He got all the right stuff because, you know, you got to have a state and got to have a thing to, to kill him in the heart. And he got a necklace of garlic because that worked. I don't know what it does, but it worked. You got to have a cross because it burned. I know that worked. And then all of a sudden, this is what was so funny about it. As they're walking through the house, this, 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 this guy has got the holy water. He's blessing the house, this actor. Now, he's all fake. He's blessing the house with his holy water. They walked upstairs, and this vampire looking real good in this black suit. Whoa, well, that sounds like Senator Warnock, doesn't it? Looking all good in this black suit. Floated from the ceiling. He floated from the ceiling looking good and cool. And I'm thinking, whoa, they better get out of that house. If somebody float from your ceiling, get out of that house. That's, that's not your house. But as he floated from the ceiling, the kid jumped behind that hero. As they jumped behind that hero, the guy jumped in front of him with this holy water, threw it on the vampire forehead. He covered his eyes. And he took his hand away. He started laughing. And he said, that don't work. He took the cross, he put it on the vampire forehead. And the vampire didn't even do anything. He said, that don't work. And that's the way it is in our life. It doesn't even work unless you got faith. It is time for us to have faith. We got to have faith in our fellow brother. We got to have faith in this country. We got to have faith in, this, in the elected officials. And right now, that's the reason I'm here. Uh, that's, I got it. That's why you're here. Yeah, well, good. you know. Really? Willie, I've got to say, it's some rambling incoherence taken to Olympian levels. <laughs> I mean, but, but that is really, that is, that is what Donald Trump has brought to the Georgia Republican Party. That is, that's what he's brought uh, to the GOP. And it's why people are turning away from Donald Trump. They understand, they understand why they didn't win back the Senate this year. But my gosh, that is, again, it's, it's you know, you sit there and, and laugh at some point, but it's, it, it really is a tragedy that that, that guy uh, who was so ill-equipped on so many levels uh, to even be the mayor of a home, his hometown uh, in Georgia, according to people from, from his hometown in Georgia, uh, might be a United States senator. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out now with a couple of weeks until the runoff. Because remember, the entire rationale that Republicans put forth, establishment Republicans in Washington who flew down to Georgia, stood behind him as he talked about, what was it, the cow? Something happened with a cow. I can't yeah. remember. A bull or a bull cow or something. Had a lot yeah. of something, something. Yeah. Getting cows, bulls getting cows pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. On. That one. Yeah. But yeah, the entire rationale was, yeah, wink, nod, we get this guy is not good. We get that he's not a good candidate, that he doesn't have any views on policy, can't put together uh, coherent thoughts. But this is about winning the Senate. This is about power. And we need this seat if we want to control the United States Senate. Well, 
with that rationale now out the window, because Democrats have taken care of that already, uh, they'd certainly like to have this additional vote in, in Senator Warnock. They'd like to have 51 instead of 50. Are Republicans energized to go out and vote for a guy in a state that voted for Brian Kemp to be governor, who, whether you like him or not, has done things for the state and is a more conventional style Republican in the state of Georgia. Are they going to go out and vote for Herschel Walker now without that rationale? Are you going to watch that performance, that review of the vampire movie and go, yeah, you know what, that guy should be one of a 100 people in this country to serve in the United States Senate? Maybe they will. It remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. But this is the party's mm -hmm. malpractice. I mean, this no. is someone who's completely unfit, perhaps unwell, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying what would happen if he was voted to be senator from Georgia? What would he would he be even what would he do? Yeah. And well, what damage would he cause? Well, I, 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 I know. I, again, when I say he's uh, unfit uh, in just about every way, you everywhere. go back and you look back through his history and. Um, and he's had some some great, great challenges, uh, and we don't know that he's through those great challenges. But David Ignatius, exactly. I think that I think again. I, I not to sound old, but it wasn't so long ago that I was on Capitol Hill, and senators were still uh, men and women that you looked up to. They really were. Uh, whether you, you whether you're talking about John McCain or Ted Kennedy or Alan Simpson, you just go down the list. Uh, they were, in their own way, giants. They, they were giants. It is uh, painful to watch um, some of Herschel Walker's uh, comments. I wrote down when you were saying that this was random incoherence taken to Olympian levels. I thought that was a, a, me a memorable phrase. Um, What's interesting to me is whether the Republicans in the aftermath of the midterms are going to try to reconstruct their party as a governing party. The Republican Party is now a, a car wreck. It's been attached to this narcissistic figure seeking revenge, uh, really out of control. And uh, does the Republican Party become again a party that people will trust? The, the mistrust factor was obvious uh, in the midterms, and it's obvious when you, when you watch Herschel Walker. Um, so, so are figures in the center of the party setting out to, to rebuild it? That's what I'm going to be watching the next few weeks. Uh, Trump seems to have gone over pretty flat in his, uh, in his uh, re-election campaign, the opening salvo. It just, it just seemed... Um, you know, he was almost sleepwalking through, through parts of that. When I see somebody like Mike Pompeo, as ambitious and opportunis opportunistic a politician uh, as there is in, in this country, begin to back away from Trump, it just seems to me we're, we're watching this, um, you know, save yourself if you can process in the Republican yeah. Party. But it's going to take, a, it's going to require a center of the party that really wants to rebuild a governing organization, not a populist, uh, uh, you know, Correct. go to MAGA rallies uh, party. And I don't see that yet, I have to be honest. A well, real it, Republican Party. Right. And, and yes. there's going to be a real challenge now because you're going to have a position where Republicans are going to control the House by the barest of margins. Yep. Uh, they're not going to be able to get a lot of things done. Mm -hmm. uh, but the question is, are they going to be continuing to make irresponsible statements that turn off independents, that turn off moderate Republicans, that turn off the very swing voters that decide whether you win states like Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia. I mean, really, if they could bring some humanity back into the party, yeah. along with the fact that they need to have the conservative ideals and values that they once stood for. I mean, yeah. that's the Instead easy part, the being a Republican. Yeah. But also empathy, humanity, not laughing when someone gets attacked uh, in a politically motivated attack, not avoiding an insurrection where our democracy almost was pulled down. I mean, these are easy things. Yeah. You just need to do it. <laughs>